Why are you wearing a body cam? It's not a body cam, it's the Insta360 Go 2. Well, can I see it? No. Come on, back off. Alrighty, that was a nice little montage shot using the Insta360 Go 2, mostly in the first person point of view. Now look, this camera comes with a lot of really fun accessories, and I think it'd be best to show them to you using a model. Now, I know we're supposed to be social distancing, but I happen to live with an individual who's very handsome. Nick, why don't you step on in here? Hey Nick, thanks for having me, buddy. How are you doing, all right? Yeah, I'm fine, hanging in there. Okay, cool, so my friend here is kind of looking like a budget Iron Man. Hey, come on. I'm sorry, uh, I just want you to show the fine people how that thing on your chest works. So yeah, it's pretty cool. It's actually a necklace. A necklace and a magnet. Now I gotta say that's pretty clever, and that's par for the course for Insta360. Again, they're just coming out with these accessories that really make you look at the cameras in a new light and kind of inspire you to go out and shoot with them. Now show us the hat. Okay. Insta360 suggests you use this on a backwards baseball cap. Again, pretty clever and kind of puts you in the territory between cool guy and looking super suspicious. Why do you keep dissing on me? I know, I'm sorry. I think I've just been deprived of real social interaction and I'm just taking it out on you. Well, it's not fair. I know it's not. Look, I think I got it from here. Why don't you go back to the astral plane, take a nap. We don't have to take naps there. Well, I don't know. Find something to do there, okay? Bye. All right. Can I have the camera though, please? Thank you. All right, well, if you're still with me, and it's a big if, let's talk about the main reason you would wanna buy this camera, and that's because it's very small. How small? Well, let me show you. Smaller than my dog, smaller than my cat, smaller than this hand sanitizer, smaller than a GoPro, about the same size as Cody here, and bigger than this kidney bean. So yeah, it's very small and very light, and that means you can get shots that would be tough or uncomfortable, or maybe even impossible with a different kind of camera on your chest and especially on your head, it's not really noticeable. Also in the box, you get this pivot stand that you can slap to a window or a wall or a car or a microwave and it takes you out of that first person perspective and just is another way to get versatile shots with this tiny camera. And then there's this really awesome USB-C charging case that also doubles as a remote control. And I know I just said it, but that's where Insta360 is really excelling coming up with nifty ways to help you shoot that are fun to use. Because guess what else? You pop the camera in here, you can still use it, and it triples as a tripod with these cute little legs that fold out. And then you get a whole nother level of shots. And then with this hinge, you can really adjust the tilt. Now the battery is obviously pretty small on the go-to. Using just the camera and the head of the chest mount, you're gonna get about 30 minutes of shooting time. Now I know that's not a lot, but what's great is the charging case is able to pass juice from the case to the camera. And it works in two ways. When your camera dies, you can either pop it in there and just continue to shoot like this using the case, or you close it like an AirPods case or something, put it in your pocket, wait a little bit, then when you open it back up, your camera, again, will be alive and well. And I personally really dig this concept. When you're using the case as the remote control, you can toggle through the different video modes here. And this is where the camera gets a little tricky, in my opinion, is with the modes. It's pretty straightforward to cycle through if you're just using the remote. But if you don't want to use the remote or have the app open running on your phone, you can blindly navigate through the modes using the hidden button on this camera, which is basically its entire body. It's another cool concept, but you have to memorize the different gestures associated with the different modes, and you kind of end up just hoping and praying that you're shooting in the mode you intended to use. In other words, it's hard to navigate without using a screen to help you. But I guess that's another price you pay for having a camera that's so small. And while we're here, let's go through the different button presses real quick. With the camera off, one press starts a video, double press takes a photo, or holding for one second puts the camera in standby mode. Then, once it's in standby mode, a single press gets you into pro mode, different from regular video mode, and double pressing shoots this hyperlapse thing. 
Now, I didn't expect you to understand all that right off the bat, and that's kind of the point. It is. You end up with a lot of accidental videos. I could be shooting one right now, I'm not even sure. And then on top of that, you're feeling all this haptic feedback and buzzes, and it does kind of feel nice on your head, but it's really hard to know what any of the buzzes actually mean. And I ended up with a lot of videos shot in pro mode. Now pro mode uses Insta360's flow state stabilization as well as horizon lock and it basically searches for the horizon line in your footage and then smooths and stabilizes everything out. Now for the most part, the footage is really stable and it's gonna look really good, especially considering a lot of it is captured on your head and on your chest. But I did notice it getting confused a lot and sometimes I'd end up with upside down clips. Now that's not a huge problem if I'm able to edit it in Adobe Premiere or something, but see, there's the kicker. If you shoot in pro mode, you have to basically pass it through one of Insta360's apps before you bring it in to another editing software. It's worth noting that I do really like Insta360's mobile app and I've walked through it in other videos. You can check the links in the description, but it's just kind of an extra step and I don't wanna feel forced to do it, especially if I'm collecting clips for a larger project, especially if you didn't intend to capture your video in pro mode in the first place. Shooting in the regular video mode does make the go-to behave more like a traditional action camera, spitting out an MP4 that you can use however you want. But in the regular video mode, you do lose the flow state stabilization. Also, a few times shooting in the regular video mode, I ended up with video that was oriented sideways. This camera's really small, it's hard to know whether you should be holding it horizontal or vertical, and I'm guessing if you press record, when it's kind of in between, it gets confused. The answer, of course, is to just use your phone paired over Wi-Fi as a viewfinder, and that works really well. But again, that's not something you're gonna wanna use, especially when you find yourself in an action-y, on-the-go situation like skiing down a mountain. Sorry if that kind of sounded like word vomit, but basically the moral of the story is, for such a simple camera, there's a lot of nuances you have to keep in mind and a lot of places you have to look to make sure you're actually doing what you want to do. But I think all of those things are in place because this camera is better suited for getting single, out of the ordinary shots that maybe you wanna to post to Instagram or something, as opposed to replacing the action camera you might already have. And I think that mission is reiterated in the specs. All right, cool. I like the, the, the camera thing. Oh, thanks. Oh, uh, yeah, it does. I'm like testing it out. Doing Dude, like that's the, pretty cool. Want to record the uh, car wash. The GoTo tops out at 1440p and has built-in storage capacity of 32 gigabytes. Yes, built-in and only 32 gigabytes. Now, I know that's going to be very off-putting to a lot of people, but it is what it is, and it is a significant upgrade over the last Go, which only had 8 gigabytes of built-in storage. Other things to note are you can take raw photos and in the app you can try things like night shot, star lapse, and the auto photo enhancer Insta360 calls pure shot. You can shoot time lapses where the clips will automatically be assembled and you can also shoot slow motion with this cute little symbol at 120 frames per second. Image quality is actually pretty good in my opinion for it being 1440p and a decent bit rate helps. You can change the field of view in the app, and when you're wearing the head or chest clips, you better get used to hearing the sound of yourself breathing heavy. There's also an HDR video mode. You can shoot in standard, vivid, or log color profiles, and the go-to is also waterproof up to 13 feet. You should also know that there are capture limits, and instead of going through all those numbers, I'm just gonna put a graphic right here. Oh, man, that was a lot to say. I actually might need to see if Nick can come back from the astral plane and tap me out for a second. Ah, uh, no thanks. Why are you wearing a Wolverine mask? Because we could choose. And why do you need to wear glasses in the astral plane? Felt like we needed a simple way to help better sell the trope. Hey, listen, uh, I gotta get back to what I was doing. Fine. Okay, so I'm sure you're wondering how much the go-to costs, and the answer is 300 US dollars. Now, that's not an offensive amount of money to pay for such a tiny, versatile camera, but I gotta be honest, my gut is telling me that it should probably be 50 to $100 less, especially when you consider that there are budget phones out there that can shoot 4K resolution, and you can get a GoPro for about that much money and get a lot better specs, including 4K 60 frames per second, you can live stream, and of course it has expandable storage and just overall has more straightforward control. Thank you very much. All right. And even though my name is Henry, I've never seen the film Hardcore Henry, which was shot entirely in the first person point of view. 
Now, the idea is cool, but for me, it's actually exhausting, and I don't really want that to be my primary mode of shooting. Insta360 makes it look really fun in their promotional material, showing people partying in a tropical paradise. But for me, at least right now, the best I can show you is what it looks like to live inside my sweatshirt or how to eat a cheesy gordita crunch alone. There are some obvious use cases though. Maybe you make a lot of cooking videos or unboxing videos. Maybe you wanna film your phone in your hand or show how fast you can complete a Rubik's Cube. This camera and its accessories make stuff like that a lot easier to shoot. And at least the charging case tripod and this pivot mount get you out of your head and body, figuratively speaking. Is that how I got the idea to talk to myself in the astral plane? Probably. Okay, well I'm clearly going a little insane. Overall, I think Insta360 is killing it with what it usually does best. All the accessories are super fun and they're new and innovative and unlike anything else out there. I love the charging case, I love the magnets, I love how small the camera is. I just think overall, the package is a little confusing and hard to use and might be targeting a niche that's too narrow, whereas the One X2 360 camera kind of stands alone and is excellent. If you've seen Hardcore Henry, maybe write a one sentence review in the comments and also let me know what you think of the Insta360 Go 2. As always, thank you for watching and be excellent to each other. What the?